So what I'm going to do, a few people have already seen this, um, but what it is, the truck's evolving. So it's one of them things, I'm going to keep doing these kind of benchmarks, so I know where I'm at, I can see the progression of the build, you can see the progression of the build, and as well as that there's already a lot more subscribers since the last time I did one of these, so I get a lot of questions that reoccur that I can just show you the, the vehicle as is, sat here, and it might answer a few of those questions, okay? All of it. Right, so what we've got here, it's a 1987, 127 Battlefield Ambulance uh, with the Marshall's body on it. Okay, so originally this will have been a three and a half litre V8, which is now a 300 TDI with an automatic in. The reason I've gone to 300 automatic is I'm getting nearly three times the miles per gallon, which increases my range massively. It also gives me a little bit more torque. Uh, I know people will say that the, the V8s are a lot more powerful and a lot more torquey, but the original military V8 out of this, even though it had been rebuilt, I find the diesel works better. It also, with the auto box, it cruises on the motorway at a good speed. Um, I can comfortably sit around the 60 to 70 miles an hour mark if I wanted to. Um, but as well as that, mainly off road, um, the reason I like the autos is one, I do the YouTube. So usually when I'm off road, I will have a camera, I will be doing things, um, and I will be stopping and starting regularly. Also, with a vehicle this size, when you're off road, when you're picking where a wheel needs to be, where axles need to be, things like that, you can just press the go pedal or the stop pedal. It's that easy. When you get stuck, it's just going from reverse to drive, reverse to drive, and it gets you out. I find it a lot, lot easier, and especially when you're going around more built up areas, when you can just pull out of a, a junction, you're in drive, and it just does its own thing, and it gets you where you need to go. It's not a performance vehicle. I don't need the manual. So that's pretty much the front end of it. That's, that's what the vehicle was. On the front, we've got a, an armoured engineering front bumper. This is the first one that they ever did. So again, a progression. I've got a Mark II coming up. You'll see Lee's vehicle. He's got the much, much nicer, more refined one. I'm going to get one similar to that. Um, so that tidies up the front end. I've got the winch max winch with the armour line rope. Reason for that is, it's the mill spec one that they're putting on a lot of the military vehicles now. It's a modern technology rope that's not going to hurt you. If you if it snaps, it's not going to come and cut you in half, that kind of thing. Saves a bit on weight. It's just a modern, a modern kind of thing. We've got full LED lights everywhere on this vehicle. It's full LED lights. So from the side lights to the indicators to the headlights, these aren't cheap Chinese ones. We've got the DRLs in the spotlights as well. Uh, so that's you know, a progression from what you can actually see. You can see the 360 camera on the front. This gives me night vision when I'm in the woods on a drive. It also gives me uh, a good low down view um, for what I'm approaching either off road or to make sure there's no kids playing around the front of the vehicle. Top of the vehicle, on the bonnet, we've got some unwind rail, okay? Don't really use this, it's just there as a future application. You can strap things down, you can put things like the high lift jack on it. it, it just secures things that you're not going to use very often, but on a trip there's some things you don't want in the vehicle because they're either wet or smell. Frontier, solar panel, okay? It's only 100 watts, but it's, o it's okay for like now. We're in the woods, I found a bit of a clearing, there is electric going into the vehicle. Eventually, I'm going to put more solar on the roof and upgrade my batteries, but that's part of the next progression. Got twin snorkels. Why have I got twin snorkels? Because when I bought this thing, it was bright green. I mean, bright green. And there was so much green on it, when I put one black thing on, it just looked wrong. So I put a snorkel on both sides. Why? It just... I don't know. I'm a weirdo. <laughs> I like it. Because you can. <laughs> because I can. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have seen some of the V8s with these on and they have an inlet for one, e one of each for the carbs but realistically I was going to put the heater um, heater vent into this for the intake. I've never bothered doing that. I might do it at some point but I've got other issues to do like you know that come first. Okay. Right so inside we've got the monitor here this gives you the 360 cameras so when you're driving around this has got terrible vision terrible vision. Um, so I can see behind me, I can see the blind spots on both sides that the mirrors can't quite get and I can see out in front of me. So that's very handy. It's also very handy in the woods on a night. If I want to drive around with no lights on, obviously I've got infrared, I can see all the way around me. Down from there, I've got this switch panel here. This isn't at use at the minute because I'm in the middle of rewiring this. Um, but eventually I'll probably switch this out to um, one less switch and two gauges. 
down from here we've got the Midlands radio where the screen's actually on the handset because then you can see if you're transmitting you're on the right channel everything like that it's just one simple thing and then the head unit part of it is actually here nothing on it it just gives you kind of well it's just where the power goes in and where is your aerial for that on the roof rack on this side it's, it's uh, over on the, the aerials mounted on this side i am not a radio geek by any means shape or form i've got this it could probably run better i've got this so it works for green laning i can get a few hundred meters maybe half mile something like that in a valley uh, and it, it works for my application. We also carry handheld radios as well, um, but that's what I use for, for that. Lower down, head unit. Um, what I'm gonna do with this one, I'm just gonna put some new speakers when I have my kitchen redone, that are gonna be in the back of the, the kitchen, which will then give me the sound nicely in the cab because I've put this bunk up here. This is where my daughter sleeps up here. So this actually folds up when I'm driving. And for some reason, I've knocked that hammer down. Uh, it's going to get electric windows in, if you notice all these dead spacers, um, that's a must on a vehicle this size, I think personally, uh, just because when you're lading and stuff, you want to drop a window down, talk to people who are giving you directions on where you need to do things. You can see here, we've got the high-low lever with the diff lock, we've got the auto gearbox, um, the more modern fuse board, this has just been rewired with a new bulkhead on, things like that. And basically I wanted the more modern spade fuses rather than the big old glass fuses so at the minute I'm kind of working from the front back uh, and I'm not far off of getting the cab done I'm slowly upgrading the dials as well I'm putting old Jorite in here because the old Land Rover stuff's a bit pants so that's getting a more modern update uh, and usually I run a GPS speedo as well because Land Rover all these consoles and things are Raptor Engineering UK you can find them on uh, if you google it i've gone for the double din option i've gone for the top pod and i've gone for the um center console uh raptor engineering uk you should be sponsoring me i've got a lot of your gear and i've had it in every land rover just saying <laughs> and i've gone for the mazda rx8 bucket seats you look back in my older videos you'll see most of this gear getting fitted um, they have been adapted to fit uh, and one thing that I'm on with at the minute is just making access on that side for the battery box so I don't have to unbolt the seat and I've already done this side where I've got a little box that I'm going to put all my tools and recovery gear in. So on the side, as you can see, from the top down, we've got the full on mister. Um, I did have the overlandy type ones, I've gone through two or three awning setups. Um, I have ummed and out about uh, getting a different, you know, the, the 180 kind of open up one. I've not had that option yet, so because uh, Armoured Engineering with the 101, they've got the same awning and it's worked really, really well for them, um, so I've, I've copied. The only thing that I don't like about it is it's a very, very light canvas, so at some point soon I'm going to have to give that a dust in a camouflage or something just so when it's the drone's going over or things like that, it matches the vehicle, just because I like the contrast of the black with the camo. So. I don't want a big dirty white awning coming out, so that's that one. I've got the Armour Engineering side steps that they were good enough to custom make to my vehicle. These can jack up at any point, you can lift the vehicle up on this side, it just works. With the side step, which this I should have done a long time ago, it's been in my head for a long time um, and they've put it into reality for me. So a little latch, this is going to get a locking system on it because I can bolt the back door, I want to be able to bolt this one so you can't get in if I have to ship the vehicle, anything like that. Modern recovery companies, they'll put you in a higher car and move you off and take your vehicle separate. I want to give them just an ignition key and leave everything in the back. So that's an option for it. Drops down, you've now got your steps. Open the door, you've got everything cooking wise, all the little charging leads, things people ask for, tea, coffee, sugars, these are camp cover, everybody asks me about these, you can google camp cover. Uh, yeah, everything that people would come and say, can I borrow? On the side here, we've got the drop down table. This, if you're doing any kind of vehicle camping, is an absolute must. Don't have to copy this, but it is a must, because you want to be able to cook, organise, do anything on the side of the vehicle, under your awning, and keep talking to people. I've got a window that's going to go here, that way I can, for when I'm doing my shooting I can sit inside watching a film and stick my head out the window when stuff's come back out. 
uh, as well as that I can talk to people in camp that are under the awning and I can also grab stuff off the table it's just kind of make things work together for multiple options coming from there inside at this moment in time we're in uh, call it night mode <laughs> so the bed's still set up and it's yeah, bear with me, I'm in the middle of a weekend camp, so there'll be stuff everywhere, but this is how I live out of it. As MTV says, this is where the magic doesn't happen. <laughs> so what have we got? We've got something off a fishing rod. <laughs> so in here, we've got a double bed. It's not a massive double bed. If you're over six feet, you're probably gonna wanna sleep on a little bit of a diagonal. That's the trade-off that I've got. I could get the pulse ambulance which is a bit wider however the pulse ambulance won't get the places where I get it just won't it's a foot wider than this it doesn't get through the gate holes it doesn't get through the gaps in the trees this believe it or not is still exactly the same width as a um, discovery one or defender with the same wheels on the only difference is where a normal defender tapers in from the archers this goes straight up so I can get everywhere they can because they've already pushed the track wide enough they've already made the space so in here again we've got more cooking options so i've had this where it's been sub-zero conditions um and it's been it's just been ropey outside so i've got a sink in here and i've got a twin burner hob okay so i can make a brew make a bacon sandwich anything that i want to do uh, and not be freezing cold outside for heating here we've got a cheap chinese diesel heater which personally I think is the way forward I know the higher end ones are a better quality materials and thicknesses and stuff but the Chinese ones are a direct copy and 5% of the cost they're for nothing um, for what it cost that my herbis basher out of this was going to cost to get fixed I just bought a full Chinese setup and I've run it for the last few years now and it's not let me down to the point where I've put them in everything now Top lockers up here, um, does the usual thing. We've got charging points and a voltmeter over here for charging. When I get in on the night, put the torch on charge, put the phone on charge. Lighting everywhere. We've got the red lighting for when I'm in bed. Um, just getting your eyes used to the, you know, everything being dark. When he's out of business. That's it, you know it. <laughs> Dirty little Land Rover hall that I am. Uh, up in that corner there, which is absolutely full of kit. We've got a child's bunk. At the minute, I keep all my bags, things like that. Uh, it's just absolutely rammed with kit at the minute. But once that's out, yes, there's a mattress there that you can't see. Charging points in the back, lights, everything a child needs to be shoved in a locker and left. Down here, 42 litre Snowmaster fridge. Um, eventually, in the new kitchen, that's going next to the door, so it pulls out on a rail so you can get to that without doing anything. And the batteries, You'll see on the other side, I've got a white locker door. The batteries are actually going in that corner with an outside access. Okay, so this is going to be worktop all the way along here in the new kitchen, and this worktop will be shorter. So now we're in day mode. I, I can't get it out of my head. There's a, if you've not seen it, there's a South African prank call for a car, and he's got day mode and night mode. Those that have seen it will get the joke. I can't get day mode and night mode out of my head. Anyway. So this is the seating when the bed's packed away. We've got room for two, maybe three people sat around here. Um, where Lee is now filming, uh, there's a seat on top of the cool box. So it makes for a good few. If you're having something to eat, we've got the world's crudest chopped together, uh, made it literally with a jigsaw on my patio before a trip. And I've never got around to actually doing it nicely. But all that does, drops in there and that's your table. And you can put this any angle most of the time i just turn it into an l-shaped kind of area for cooking on here all the way across um i've done a little bit with the laptop don't tend to use the table to be fair it's more this piece of wood drops down and this makes the bed up that's that's all it's for Oop. so drop that down it's loosened off over time so that tucks under there at the minute I just took that out of the way and this is the seating area smart telly up on the the top there so I can chill I can just sit here watch telly have a beer on the side or a cup of tea or something with a blower heater on 
doesn't matter what the weather anything like that's doing outside back door again we've got some more camp cover gear excuse the mess i've got lots of open zips here someone will be screaming at the telly about that submarine hatches open so what we've got is that tends to be just little bits and knickknacks and stuff remotes with tellies bungees whatnot we've got the shower for outside we've got all the personal admin gear there slowly i'm rewiring new lights that come around everywhere the rope lights in a nice little aluminium diffuser uh, and that'll do any color so i can get rid of some of these older more crude lights i'm re-trimming all the ceiling redoing all the carpet um, just because i've had the vehicle a while it's starting to get a little bit tired up in this corner you can see i'm mega low on voltage um, i think i've collapsed the cells in one of my batteries uh, and i've been running everything all weekend so that's a little low we've got the solar controller over here uh, that tells me what's going in what's getting used how the battery status is it's got a, a very unhappy face on it at the minute uh, el cheapo chinese switch panel uh, a little bit lower down is just general storage then i've got all my cooking gear for outside and then battery banks at the bottom right so the rear of the vehicle starting from the top again we've got an armadillo awning 1.4 um, i've had this thing for probably coming up 10 years now um, it's battered it's used but it still works there's little bits on it like up here where the, the plastic tabs bust but i bust that and it was about minus seven minus eight i was ragging on it brittle plastic i get why that's done that i'll bust the zip off it <laughs> it's just it's took the beatings kind of well so i can't complain about the failures because every time something has failed i've either been doing something silly or it's been silly conditions so is what it is up at the top we've got a light bar just for when someone's really really up your ass on the night time you can give them the bunny boilers um, or just general reversing right now it's facing into camp if someone needed it below that we've got the reverse camera so that's on all the time when i'm driving gives me an idea if i'm holding traffic up i can just shuffle out the way people can get past and i can carry on again um, just below it i've got a tail light and indicators high level just because it's hard to see my lights i think um, just one more nice touch with driving a big camouflage vehicle if i was to be at the side of the road uh, anything like that you want to be visible um, a big camo truck it's not that visible so do what i can uh, coming down a bit of security got two or three locks on the vehicle got the camp cover trasheroo type jobby um, again so much camp cover gear why <laughs> they should be sending me more stuff <laughs> a uh, little jerry can this is just camp fuel fire lighting that kind of thing for the diesel heater possibly if i needed more fuel in the vehicle itself we've got a locker in here which carries oils um spares gas things like that the stuff that you don't ideally want inside the camper if it was to leak break things like that coming a little bit further over we've got the lifesaver jerry can um this is one of them things very expensive thing to get first off but once you've had it a while if it breaks you replace it tomorrow kind of item okay. this is the jerry can model you can put most waters in here and it's going to come out clean drinking fresh i think the only thing it won't do is sea water so pump it up that pressurizes the, the air inside it which then pushes it through the filter you press the button it comes out there little nozzle on top you don't have to use this this comes off but because i've bolted it to the vehicle to make it harder to steal um i use this nozzle just clip it on and that's my uh, water supply i like it um you can get onboard water systems and things like that and i have got a big water tank inside but even though that's tap water that goes in there i treat that as gray water for washing showering that kind of thing and anything i put in me goes through this first just because last thing you want to be doing is out ruining your time off work or what have you because you've got some stomach bug because you took on some bad water or it's stagnant from sitting in a water tank for any period of time it might be being a bit strange but it's a simple thing and it's a very very basic mistake that people can make of just taking on bad water drinking out of rivers and lakes and things and then you've just ruined everything haven't you so yeah always have clean water you've missed the most important thing what's that the bottle opener <laughs> So yeah, as Lee's just pointed out, uh, we've got a bottle opener here. <laughs> just survival. <laughs> survival. That's where your priorities are. 
coming around on this side, there's, there's not much to tell on this side. Uh, we've got the, the big original ambulance window. Um, it's not the best window in the world, not overly impressed with it, uh, but it is what it is. Um, I've took the awning off this side, which I had on just to drop down to cover the shine off of the window, but I have got window covers for every bit of glass for this vehicle. This side again, Armoured Engineering hooks me right up with my ladders, because one thing you don't appreciate when you're using a more off-gridy kind of camping vehicle is your roof space uh, and your roof platform which you don't appreciate it till that one time you need it where you might need to do something higher up like in this woods we've put um, some cords between the trees so we can throw things over the cords and pull things up like a parachute that kind of thing to do that what we've done is we reverse the land rover up to the uh, the tree we've got on the roof walk to the end of it you can tie the tree off straight away you're 15 feet in the air so it's little things like that uh storage and and whatnot i'm going to put a platform up there with some more solar can put the kayak up there we can obtain more electric with more solar panels as well it's, it's a lot of real estate i'm woman and hour in as the child gets bigger of doing a pop top conversion on this but that's still way down the line um as projects and funds allow further progression you'll see this dirty white with a blue cover box on here this is going to get camouflaged as soon as probably tomorrow and all this is this is going to be my new power distribution box so at the bottom there there'll be the two batteries it's lockable there'll be my solar control and all my fuse boards and distribution just keeps everything tidy good access to it and if you look on um, my other vehicle build walk rounds you'll see Ian's Land Cruiser totally ripped the idea off of him he's got some he's traveled around the world in that thing and he's got some very 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 efficient very good thought out kind of options and this was one of them as well as having the pull out fridge this is why I like these tours you get to see multiple different vehicles how different people use them and cherry pick from each one what you want to use so yeah check out the other videos so on the rear of the vehicle, again, more drop down tables. What you'll find with a vehicle like this is the flat surfaces when you're in the woods and things, it's at a premium. This used to be the way in and out of the vehicle, but now with the new layout and everything, it's just better the other way. But if you wanted to, you can still have all your shower gear on here. You could cook on here if you wanted to. You could fix something on here, whatever. It's, it's options, isn't it? So from there, if we go up a little bit, excuse the mess, as you can tell I'm re-plumbing and rewiring. We've got the LPG shower, um, so under here, we're under the awning at this point, if it's out, you've got the shower here, you, you've got all your shower kit, your shower gels, your towels, things, it's, it's an enclosed space if you want to just put the barrier across, so this is your bathroom effectively. I have got the little cassette toilet in the back for the daughter, um, or, I mean, you, you, you could even swap this, well you could have a toilet in here, it's whatever you want to do. Um, you've got other little bits and pieces you can get out of the locker at any point. It's, yeah, this is the workspace. This is the work end of the vehicle. As you can see, I've got no end of crap just jammed in here. It's the tripods for camp cooking. It's the Dutch ovens. It's the recovery gear. It's the spares for the vehicle. It's the tools. It's, it's basically the garage. So I'm not going to go into the ins and outs of everything in there, but that's what it is. Right, so there you go. Bit of a tour of the vehicle. Um, there's a few little bits and pieces. I also use this vehicle for me, uh, the videos for me insurance because, as you can imagine, on a modified policy, could you imagine listing all the stuff that I've done to this thing? Um, and as you know, I've got a set of locking axles to go on it, uh, refit the back out, a few bits and pieces. So I just want to keep reference of it because it's it's one of them things you put a lot of time, money, effort, things like that into these vehicles, and uh, yeah, you what. It's nice to look back, you know, it's how you've come on and how you've done things because projects come and go, things change. It's I never used to film anything, I never used to take pictures. I've had some cracking vehicles and I've got nothing but a couple of grainy pictures to show for it. So, yeah, hope you've enjoyed that and uh, check the description below and obviously check out the other vehicles in the playlists. Thank you very much.